a person living with HIV who has found out his diagnosis at the age of 23 uh, on, on the verge of dying from AIDS. Um, first of all, my name is Billy. I am currently 30 years old. And what should I say? First, I have a very rough childhood. My mom committed suicide when I was three and my dad died when uh, uh, when I was nine. He had a cardiac arrest due to drug addiction. And I was passed from, from um, my family and it was really hard growing up without any support. At the age of 17, I was engaged in prostitution because I really wanted to finish college. And at that time, I don't have idea any of any diseases, infection. Mm -hmm. I just had to do it because I'm desperate and I need to survive. I was able to speak to my half-sister and she invited me to come over and she we we talked and and he said and she said that she can help me with my studies and after two years i stopped because i i just graduated from an associate degree and I really wanted to work. I wanted to earn for myself and I wanted to help out my family. I confess that I'm gay, but they didn't like it. They, they gave me a rosary and a Bible <laughs> saying that you should, it's just a phase and you should change. You should have a girlfriend and everything. But I followed my heart and I met this office mate who was away for, for like two months because he had to undergo leave of absence because of a sickness. I wasn't aware of that sickness and I still fell in love with him. I lived in with Francis. We were having a very nice relationship until one one day I came home and he is with someone else. So I had to break up with him and live in a separate apartment. After a year, well I was well I was in Boracay, I I noticed that I was getting dinner. And I had a lot of cough. And then my friends are telling me, why are you getting so thin? I told them, oh, it's, uh, it's just that I'm on a diet. And they tell me that your hair is falling. I'm just stressed because of work. And I wasn't really aware of what's going on with me. But it's really giving me and a feeling that there's there's really something. Then one night when I was partying, I had a call while I was on the dance floor. It was the sister of my ex, Francis. And she told me that Francis has died. <laughs> and that I should take an HIV test. And I came home, look at my at myself in the mirror, and I can see that my skin is peeling off. It was dermatitis when I checked with the doctor. And then I had an on and off fever. So I what I had to do was to contact my med friends. 
and asked them what should they take. I self-medicated, bought myself azithromycin, vitamins, herbal medicines, and nothing's working until I cannot stand up, I cannot poop, I cannot urinate. And it's like there's hollow blocks in my chest. Um, we had, I had an x-ray and it says it's normal. And then I was brought to a hospital in um, Las Piñas. And then I was asked by the doctor, are you gay? And I told the doctor I was, I am. And bigla siyang nagtanong, nakipag-sex ka ba sa lalaki? Ilan na? And then the doctor said, with all the people around walking, nurses, and he said, he said, Baka may AIDS ka na. And then I saw the mom of my friend go out and never return. But another doctor went to me and said, you should go to a facility that can best help you. So they uh, got me a, an ambulance and I was sent to RITM Alapang. There, I, I can feel that I'm almost dying. I cannot breathe anymore. And then the doctor said, do you want to have yourself tested for HIV? And I was like, na po lahat. Gusto ko pa po mabuhay. So I got myself tested and I was confined there. After three days, the result came. But when I opened the paper, it it's like I'm in a time machine going back. It was really hard for me to accept. And he said, you're still gonna live. You just have to go through this treatment, this uh, hospitalization and admission and everything will be fine. I was diagnosed with pneumonia and then other infections. I was put in an ICU and I was, um, they, they input a tube in my throat and I stayed there for like three months. Yes. There's really no one to watch me. I was lucky because the nurses were very caring. They're the ones shaving me, changing my clothes and washing me up. But, and they advised me to inform my half-sister and my stepmom. My sister was really mad. He told me that, ayan kasi, nagbakla ka pa. Ayan kasi, naglandi ka. I was really given judgment by my own family. Their discrimination. 